get a punch for the first day of the month. Yes, guys, November 1 today, 2020. And, uh, yeah. Um, got a special audition today, guys. I got my brother right here with me. The one and only legendary scratch in the house. So, um, yeah, we're just driving around, man, on a mission right now. But I just thought, yeah, we'll do it differently today. And um, just start talking as we drive in. Um, yeah, just discuss some shit that's happening this month. So, um, yeah, hope you're well wherever you are, guys, and whatever you're dealing with. You know, keep pushing on, keep hustling, keep being who you are. You know, don't let this world break you and, you know, make you uh, a slave, which you're about to witness, sadly, with what's um, happening in the world, eh? So, uh, yeah, it's been quite a month. You know, we almost had a brother. We almost lost to mental health, sadly. And uh, thank God, you know, life today so that's a blessing you know life is still there and, um, yeah you know mental health guys you know a lot of people dealing with a lot of things right now it's hard you know there's a lot of negativity you feel know, the problem is low vibrations you know bad energy and, um, you can't get you know some people you can't get the best of them so if you're going through something guys feel free to talk you know, we all have, we have one another. Let's communicate. Let's be open about our hardships and talk to each other. I feel like sometimes as men, brothers don't talk, you know, they just deal with shit. And sometimes it gets too hard and we can't do it anymore. So wherever you are, you know, look towards your friends and your close people. Talk more. I'm here, man. If you wanna send me a message, I can call you. I like to talk to people face to face. If I can, I'll give you a ring. So, um, yeah, you know, I think that's what's up. How's your month been, brother? Scratch, what's been happening, man? It's actually a funny thing, like, uh, yeah. it's talking about this mental yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> nice thing. Mm. Like, um, this mental health thing, bro, like, it's, I think the biggest problem is, um, I was having this conversation with, uh, just before I actually talked to you today, yeah. on the phone, in the morning. Um, we're saying like it's we, we observe like um, for us for us African people we came from colonization so things was difficult for our parents so they came from a system of like they couldn't be in a, they couldn't be a secretary they couldn't be a nurse in a general hospital in a, in a general place because they didn't want pass just to leave the city after 6, 6 p.m. you know 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. needed a pass just to justify what the city of a native land so our parents grew up from not having freedom to having freedom but then when the babies came out because now they're trying to see what they can do with their career. They kind of left the children. Some of the children got left behind and they didn't get raised right. They went to nice school, they went to nice this, they had nice and that. But then there was nobody to support them and to communicate issues or social skills with, with cats. Mm -hmm. And then parents don't understand the kids, the kids don't understand the parents, and then that's when issues started arising. Yeah. So it became rebellion. Then kids were forced into fields like we're both from the same region of Africa, Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. And if you look at every one of us who's from not just Southern Africa but even across Africa, you probably find this as well in South Americans and um, Asians as well. Mm -hmm. That um, we're forced to be a doctor, lawyer, accountant, what's that, uh, engineer. Exactly. So we, we're not permitted to be us. Mm -hmm. So then already now we're placed in cage for the time we're trying to do us. Then even if we just succeed to be an engineer and stuff, because we got the gifts or our parents drive just pushes just to go through the whole education system. And we do that, we get to become engineers, become accountants, become doctors. Mm -hmm. A lot of brothers, a lot of sisters are not happy with themselves because yeah. that's not who they are. They ended up doing something because it's considered to be prosperous in yes. That's what you need to do for and, life, you know? Yeah, so but that's not what's inside you. That's not what the heart wants you to do. Yeah? And, and exactly. And, uh, and I think some people are very vulnerable, especially with this whole COVID thing. Because COVID rushed a lot of things. Because some people have the ability to hide in some other field or activities like playing sports and stuff. Because COVID stopped a lot of stuff. Yeah. People didn't, some people didn't have a release naturally. Mm -hmm. So like if you're in a job that you hated, then the pressure and the whole COVID thing. And yeah, you are stuck at home, not able to socialize exactly. and go out. And all these things have been closed off. 
then you struggle to deal with all that demons. Yeah, yeah so, so it'll be very interesting to see the suicide figures right now because of this whole COVID thing whereby people are not permitted to be justice. But then it exposed that the system hasn't really been supporting the people. For people to be this vulnerable whereby... But then, what we need to look at, we need to remember that Australia is the number one for suicide rates. For the lot. ages of 32, um, 18 and 32, I think it is, uh, per capita, you know. So, right now, I think if we were to look into them, I have a feeling that we won't be surprised to realize there's more people that have actually committed suicide compared to COVID death. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it wouldn't be surprising. be surprising. I wouldn't be surprised because I don't think we've got a lot of COVID dead for one, no? It's, it's yeah, that's you know, in Australia. It depends. You see now, the thing is, COVID deaths are classified in different categories in different nations. Mm -hmm. So some people will be saying like, uh, if you test positive for COVID, you die uh, from, uh, you see from six ah, gunshots, then ah, you got a different case. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and you see now, some some, some nations also have um, funding to say like if it's COVID related, you get funding for that. But then that's the one we were looking at. Remember what you just said? I remember when I was watching the one about the NHS in the UK. They were talking about how the NHS, if you tested positive for COVID in March, right? Yeah. And you got treated, you did your whatever, after two weeks you were negative, you went home. If you then had a car crash in August and you died, they would consider you a COVID test because you tested positive in March. But then you got cleared. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? You know, where they are using this. It's a numbers game. That's what I've told people. It's a numbers game. That's my game. It's a numbers game. We I, all I, know it. I think the best way is to say, like, yo, man, like, it's, without medical professionals, like, whereby you can pull out stats from the country, but also read your stats and compare the stuff. Just don't be taking what I'm saying or what he's saying mm. for granted, but also read the stats and do your research and stuff and be. Which is what most people here. don't do. You know, most people are just watching telly and accepting. That idiot box, what it says. Yeah, but that's the problem, though. That's the problem in society, man. Where you know people, and I think another thing in society that's caused a lot of problems right now with what we're dealing with is that um, we believe that the people that we have got in these high positions are making the best decisions. For us. Okay, but I'll, I'll say you this: know? when we've been saying this since we're youngsters or at school, whatever, yeah. and it's been always been like, what man is bigger at home. Well, like whatever you're doing begins at home. Yeah. So don't be looking for somebody else to be giving you an answer for something that's happening in your house. Yeah. You have to deal yeah, with yeah, the stuff exactly. in your house. You if pick you have, it up first. If, if you're a parent, be a parent. If you're a brother or a sister, be a brother exactly. or sister yeah. and handle, help your brother out, help your sister out, help your parents out. Don't be waiting for like the government to come into it. Yeah, that's silly, man. I like that point. That's a really, really massive point, man. Yeah, be, before you're the best in your country, you have to be the best in your home. Mm -hmm. Before you're the best in your school, you have to be the best in your home, like your manners and, and everything think, else. And I think what you're saying shows that a lot of people have let go of their power and what they can do. It, it's not power. It's not power. No, no, no. You they know what I mean? No, no, no. They have let go of their responsibility. Yes, but I, when I say responsibility, you've got the power to do those things, you know what I mean? But you're not doing them. You know I mean? You're not using those powers to do those things that you're supposed to be responsible for. You know what I mean? So people have let other people now take charge of those things for them and they've got these people coming on TV and saying, oh, this is what it is, this is what it is, blah, blah, blah. And they just go, oh, yeah, 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 mm, that's right, mm, mm, yeah, correct, oh, yeah, you know? So that's what I'm saying, you, you're losing your power. You've got the power to find those things out yourself. That's you know? very true. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was also saying, like, it's, I think power is a strong word to use. Okay. Because it, um, the problem with the word power, people start envisioning things like Zeus, you know, like, you know. Ah, okay. Well, I'm not putting it there. No, no, no. I, I know you're not, but then it's, because when you put the word power, people get scared. Oh, the, the powers that be, be, da, 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 da. Yeah. So I'm not going to really mess this, with this whole really resources, because these guys said this and that's it. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't say power. It's your responsibility to be in charge of your kids out. That's, mm -hmm. that's your responsibility. You can't be just doing stuff to your kids or then somebody else do stuff to your kids without understanding the consequences of it. And why? Why is it justified? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like, um, to be honest, man, growing up in Africa, we didn't have a DHD or whatever they call it. Like it's, yeah, man, a DHD, what else? It's all so, these so, so, so stuff like that, it's like you have to look at the personal situation at home and realize why this kid is acting up. Then you find the root of the problem, you address the problem, 
you're in a better state of mind. Yeah. And that's the issue where right now we live in a world whereby we are addressing the symptoms and dealing with them. Instead of going to the root cause of the problem and getting it all sorted. Exactly. We just numb the symptoms, but the thing is still going, you know what I mean? Whatever is happening is still there, and we're just like alleviating the symptoms. Like, ah, yeah, and, and, and now you're on tablet for the rest of your life. Exactly, you know? that's the scenario. It's yeah. passing on the what? It's not passing on the power, it's passed on the what? Responsibility to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And you say, are oh, the powers B are going to handle the situation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's easy now to hide behind something for you not to do what you're supposed to be what doing. To do. mm-hmm. Exactly, like it's like I remember having beef um, one time. I was this one lady I was dating, and I had an issue with a cousin of mine. And they're just like, "Why, why are you still helping him out?" I was like, "No, man. Like, look, man. Even though it's my cousin, it's my brother. So I'm my brother's keeper. So it's still my responsibility to be responsible with this guy. So." At the end of the day, when everything happens in this world, it's it's not the government that's gonna cry at the funeral of your cousin. It's exactly. you. <laughs> it's gonna exactly. be you. You're gonna be like, ah, oh, my cousin passed away. You want the whole world to stop? The whole world's not gonna stop. Nah, I ain't got time for that, man. Nah. Yeah, but it's true. But it's, it's yeah. Real so and that, that's real how I felt. Like it's. I remember I've lost. Wow, I've, wow. I've lost like my closest friend. It was his birthday yesterday. But then I lost one of my closest yeah. friends. And when he passed away, man, I want the whole world to stop and say, like, man, we all need to mourn this dude because this dude was a stand-up character. And I went to work that very day, man, and I was hurt. Nobody cared. Like, I was hurt. It was my eyes. It hurt me for years. And nobody cared. But then it's... That was, that was my responsibility to deal with that stuff. Nobody else cares. And it's, it's, your, responsibility, it's your responsibility to care about people that are around you, your family members, your friends, everybody. Like, it's... Mental health is important. And mm-hmm. it's all about, it's, it's, a, it's a connection, it's a, it's a tree, just like got a family. But you know, with what you're saying, it brings me back to a concept. Um, I just did this interview, guys, you might hear it, um, I don't know when, maybe this month, hopefully. But I, I had an interview that I did um, with um, my brothers in Africa. And they had the question about what you miss when you come to Australia, when you're in the diaspora. And I said, one of the biggest things that you miss out, uh, yeah, is that community living that we have back home? Because you know your neighbors. Together. You know, you know everybody. You know the whole street, the yes. whole hood. So it's, it, you it, go it, to your it, shops. Yeah, if you your parents dies or somebody dies mm. at your house, the whole street oh, is going to take the funeral. Oh, bro. You contribute. You don't even take our money, pretty much, bro, half the time. Bro, bro, bro. So I think you know when it comes to mental health, it gets bad over here because you don't have the community yeah, living. Isolated. Yeah, you're isolated. This, this is a good point. Now I want to, I want to say this like it's. You go to places like Africa, Asia, South America, because we've got the same culture. Probably, I don't know about too much about New Zealand. But then it's like, you don't find HK home. Because like once the parents get age, their job now is to take care of the kids that are coming up for that. Us guys would say, now we, me and him are adults, we've got a missus or a wifey, whatever. we got kids, grandparents' job is to take care of the kids. And it gives them a purpose, it gives them focus. They wake up in the morning to make sure the kids are going to school, blah, 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 everything's sold out. Uh, so like, if you had an issue whereby something has to be taken to school, you, the kid forgot his lunch, all you knew your dude was like, you're calling your parent, which is like your kid's grandparent, to go, can you please go drop so and so's lunchbox? Exactly. Because that made work. Yeah, work. because they're retired. It gives them purpose, gives them things. But something. you know, the one thing that I like about that, that we don't realize, as much as it's giving them purpose, we need to remember that these are our elders. So these are wise people that have lived and years. Yes. They pass that knowledge to these kids. Exactly. That's so there's that passing of you know so much information and knowledge to these and younger skills. kids coming exactly. up and growing up, and yet they've got these grandparents teaching them. So it's a continual cycle, you know. Yeah. So so even if there's a parental loss, it's like there's the library of information is still there to keep on updating the kids. Like it's there's a saying in Africa. I think it's a bunch of saying something like um, every time um, an elder is lost, it's like a whole library. Of information has been lost, like it's so we use our elderly as also a learning resource for our kids and to maintain the culture, and then it also gives them purpose when they retired. And when the kids are also growing up, they also take care of their grandparents. Like I was talking, I was having this uh, conversation with drama earlier mm-hmm. and saying like, "Yo, man, like remember, like your grandma, like it's we, we used to take care of her, and she used to take care of us. Although we were kids, and she was you know, mm-hmm. that was the mm-hmm. scenario. Okay, nobody's there." Two babysitters were just all going to drama's house, and then his mom's doing what? 
His grandmom still what taking care of taking us. care of all yours now. Yeah. And we took care ah, of her. She, she needed something, true. whatever. So we're communicating her, with her. It's like and because um drama's grandma was from the mom's side, she was shy of her uh, son and daughter. So she always wanted to look strong like I'm not a burden. Oh, okay. So like we, we read that about her. So we, we used to communicate communicate things that she needed to the parents in a nicer way whereby she, she wouldn't feel embarrassed and felt comfortable. So she should she, communicate with us like, shy, I need this, blah, 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 blah. So we go say, like, ah, let's do this and let's do that so that grandma gets away. Okay. You feel it? So it's, it helps them feel part of something and not feel like a burden. Okay. So they blend in with the kids. Yeah. Because now they feel like a burden. Because when, when it all started, when you get, got introduced, um, your parents were the one who were hustling for you. You went to your parents for stuff, so now when they retired, they kind of have to ask you for money. Mm -hmm. They have to True. trade on you, so I get you. So they get a care of them, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's life, you know. That's life, you know. And what you know, what goes around comes around. At the end of the day. Yeah, and you know, I, I was having this conversation as well with my my cousin, my youngster, and CK. Like it was like we have this conversation and say like, look, man, look, it's. We had a better off situation whereby we would communicate o openly with one another. And we, we create that culture from the start as parents. So sometimes some people are not fortunate enough to have grandparents. Mm -hmm. Some people are adopted ETC mm -hmm. or have certain orphans. Yep. So what happens with them whereby they don't have grandparents to also pass the culture? Mm -hmm. You also have to learn that communication early on and be smart enough mm -hmm. to communicate with um, your children. Mm -hmm. Like this is how we do stuff. Like for example, um, I come from a family with a lot of boys. Mm -hmm. Not just my direct family, but also like my cousins. Like there's too many boys. Mm -hmm. And some of us were really rowdy as kids. And so me and my brother came up with a thing when we were kids. Like, yo, man. Uh, next one. Next one, yeah? So me and my brother came up with this thing where we're like, look, man, I'm crazy, you're crazy. Our kids are most likely going to be crazy, going to have the same DNA as us. So, same mentality, same mind, same blood. Teens are going to be running amok. So, me, I hope my nephew never sees us until he's like 19, 20 years old. So, um, we came up with a thing whereby um, you, I'm going to be cool with this kid, like tight friends, best friends. So that whenever he's about to do something silly, I'm his go-to uncle, so I'm going to be a silly uncle. As far as it's concerned. Yeah, so no then mind. I can guide him properly how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. It's compared to him going to like some other um, unexperienced teenager and mm -hmm. getting advice how to do this or do that. Because ah. ah. I feel like ah. a lot of us, some of us guys fail because we get information yeah. from people exactly. with the same problem mm -hmm. and stuff with the same and It's not going to help anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it's just getting it. But, anyways, guys, this is us right now. You know. Brother Scratch, Captain Kula, you know, I just want to um, do a shout out right now, guys. I just remember Scratch is wearing an Arsenal shirt, and he reminded me that um, it was my uh, dad's graduation. My dad graduated on Friday. Oh, congrats, my man. He got his doctorate, you know, so Dr. Mabuto, shout out to dad. Uh, shout out to dad. Um, that's a big one, you know, big one for the family. And uh, yeah, bless up, bless up, you know, and uh, massive thing. So yeah, guys, wherever you are. Uh, let's talk, let's be there for one another, let's try our best, and uh, yeah, let's uh, keep our heads up and keep doing what we gotta do. You know what's up, we got this. Shout out to the QRAU water. water, man. Yes, by the way, guys, Yo. we're drinking water for those it's who see the red here, cups. Man. It's crazy. We've got pure AU water right here. There we go, pure AU. Our cups, man, drinking water, hydrate, keep it good. Don't be confused with red cups, man. We ain't drinking and driving. Nah. Nah, we ain't about that. <laughs> <laughs>